In this video, I'm going to show how to install the most recent version of Java on Windows 11. First, I'm going to do it quick. Later on in the video, I'll show what can go wrong and how you might need to install it if you're running an older version of Windows or installing an older version of Java. Start off, go to your favorite browser or Microsoft Edge, type in download Java, scroll down to the Oracle link, click the link, and scroll down to selecting Linux, Mac OS, or Windows, depending on what operating system you're using. I'm going to demonstrate this with Windows, so I click Windows. Then select the x64 installer. The link should end in exe. This is an executable file. Download it. Go to your downloads folder. Double click on the executable. It's going to ask me if I want to allow this to make changes on my computer. I do. And then we just go through the menu saying next, we're going to install it in the default folder, which should be on your C drive within program files in a folder named Java. And we just keep clicking next until it's installed. Finally, to verify that the installation worked correctly, I'm going to create a new folder. I'm going to right click within the folder and create a new Java file. I'm going to change the name of that file to main.java. I am changing the file extension to .java instead of .txt. If you can't see your file extensions, you need to go up into the window under view. Then at the bottom, select show. And then make sure that the file name extensions option is checkmarked. Once you've got main.java created, go inside it write or copy from the internet a quick hello world program. That's what I'm doing here. And then we want to make sure we can compile and execute this program. There's a couple different ways to do this. I'm just going to create a PowerShell, which is like the terminal in, that Mac users would use, but for Windows. And then I'm going to run two commands, Java C, main.java, and then Java main to execute it. We see hello world prints out, so the installation is successful. But now let's get into what it might look like if things don't go as smoothly, or perhaps you're installing a different version of Java or installing it on uh, an older version of Windows. One thing you'll notice is that I skipped the first link at the top. The first link is for Java 8. I'm going to use the most up-to-date version of Java. A lot of people still use Java version 8, but I'm just going to go with the most recent version. Java 8 is still perfectly fine, and uh, I've run it very recently, and it works great. Don't be weirded out by the fact that my browser is dark. I'm just using a dark background because that's what we programmers like to do. If you want to feel like you're in the cool kid club, you can use a dark background as well. You can just change it in settings, but that has no effect on what we're doing today. In terms of the Java license, Java can be used for personal use and development at no cost. It's only when you're using it for commercial purposes where there comes to be a problem. If you're concerned about this, I recommend using Java version 8 because it's my understanding that that can be used for any purposes. But I haven't kept up to date on the legal issues, so that might not be correct. Back to the Oracle page. I'm going to scroll down. I'm going to select my operating system, which is Windows. I'm going to download the extension with the exe, the executable. This is almost always what you want to do. It's the most convenient way to do it because the executable is going to install Java for you. From there, I open my downloads folder and I double click on the executable. If you should ever be so unlucky as to download an executable that you don't know where it came from off the internet, you should never double click on it. And you certainly shouldn't allow it to make changes to your computer. But I know where this executable came from. It came from a trusted source. So we're going to say allow and move forward. Note that this isn't literally the message that I saw. I grabbed this off the internet because my recording would not record this window. That's a safety feature. You're going to see something very, very similar to this, though. From there, just click next, click accept. Uh, use the default uh, install folder for Java, then we'll move right on ahead. From there, you got to create your own Java file or download one from the internet. This is going to be a file that ends in the .java extension. If you're not seeing your file extensions, you need to go to view, and then at the bottom, there'll be an option to show more, and you want to change the, you want to make sure that the checkbox is selected to show file extensions. If you're running an older version of Windows, the menu is a little bit different. You need to go to the top of some new folder window and click view, and then you'll immediately see uh, three checkboxes. It's the middle one, file name extensions. It needs to be checked. Java files are plain text files. That means they can be edited in any plain text editor, Notepad, Notepad++. There are also, of course, specific programs such as Eclipse, IntelliJ, Xcode that are designed for writing and compiling and running code. Whatever you want to use uh, here, I'm actually using uh, Notepad. But I typically just code in Notepad++ because I find it simple. There's multiple different ways to open a terminal. One way is to right-click on some white space in the empty folder 
and select the terminal option. Another is to click onto the folder path and just type in CMD and hit enter. That'll open a command prompt. Another is to go down to your search bar and type in CMD or command, and you should have an option for a command prompt. Now, if you do that last option, you'll have to change directory or CD into the folder where you want to compile and run your Java code. One easy way to do this is to type CD and then a space, and then open that folder where your code is and click on the folder path and drag and drop it into the command prompt, and then you just hit enter. If you watched the first part of this video, you saw how easy this was for me. As soon as I ran the Java installer, I was able to compile and run my Java program. Now, in the past, I've had to do a little bit more work. I've had to go through and edit the environment variables. I don't know if it's the Java update or the Windows 11 that added the quality of life feature such that I didn't have to do this, but you may need to do this. If when you run Java C and you try and compile your program, you get this message that Java C is not recognized as an internal or external command operable on blah, 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 blah. This means that you need to set some of your environment variables. Go into the search bar at the bottom, begin to type the word environment, and one of the first things that pops up should be this option to edit environment variables. Click the environment variables button at the bottom, and then you'll have two uh, frames within your window. Go to the bottom one, one of the options, one of the variables there should be path, select path, and then click the edit button. We're gonna to need to put in a new Java JDK bin path. One easy way to get that path name and avoid any typos is to open a folder, get the folder path to the Java JDK bin, and then right click up near the top of the folder, near that folder icon, and copy the path as text. Now go back to your system environment variables. Next, click on the new button. We're gonna add a new path. It needs to be the path to our Java JDK bin folder. Now what you're gonna see me do here is I accidentally forget to add in the backslash bin on the end of the path name. Common mistake, everybody makes mistakes. And so I'm just gonna go back in and then add it in this time right here. So that's why you'll see me in the video editing it. I also move the path up and down in the ordering. The ordering does matter if your system finds Java it will stop looking further for Java. So if you happen to have multiple versions of Java installed on your system, whichever one you want to be in use should be at the top of the list of your environment variables within the path. So the steps for testing that it worked are the same as before. I'm gonna do a slight alternative where I'm just gonna run Java C dash version in the command prompt instead of compiling and running a Java program. Either way is fine for testing. The command prompt will print Java C and then the version number if it worked. Otherwise, it will print that Java C is not recognized as an internal or external command. An important note, however, is that if you already had a command prompt open, that command prompt will not be able to see the new path variables that you added. You have to close the command prompt and open a new one. That's all I can think of for this video. There are a lot of fiddly steps involved potentially in this. If it doesn't work out, retrace your steps, maybe re-download it, maybe just try the reinstall back from scratch, look at other tutorials online, there are many excellent ones, and uh, good luck and have fun using Java.